Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, volunteer training session for Sunil Gupta, the new pre raphaelites which will open in the Worth Gallery on the 24th of September and will run until the 19th of January 2022. Um, Gupta has explored multiple sexual, racial, and cultural identities and has challenged restrictive conventions. Um, although his work has significant social and political implications, it is consistently poetic and evocative rather than polemical. Um, for those that you don't know him, um, from the beginning of his career in the arts, Gupta has always rejected the conventional representation of um, LGBT, LGBTQ plus um, collectives. Um, and he's always um, sought to the big gay men in relationship to their diverse life experiences. Um, his pieces are often autobiographical in origin, um, but they resonate with a wide range of viewers because they are structured in an open-ended fashion. So um, first off, let's um, look at Sunil's um, life. He's a London-based photographer, curator, and cultural activist. He was born in New Delhi, but he moved to Canada when he was very young in 1969 and then to the UK in 1983. He completed his high school in Montreal in 1970 and he continued his studies at Dawson College in, in Montreal as well uh, between 1970 and 1972. He became a Canadian citizen in 1972 as well. He initially planned to fulfill his parents' expectations and he pursued a degree in accountancy um, from Concordia University, which he completed in 1977. Um, however, in 1976, he went to New York and decided to expand his understanding of photography by studying during a few months um, at the New School of Social Research under Philip Holzman and Lisette Model, who encouraged him to make photography his, his profession, much to the chagrin of his parents, actually. While he was in New York, he was also very inspired by the gay liberation movement, which was in full swing at the time. And he produced one of the first series um, in his career, which I will discuss later. Um, when he returned to Montreal, um, Gupta continued his business studies until um, 77, as I was saying. And then he made plans to um, move on to photography, um, but in London this time. So he took a BA in photography um, at West Surrey College of Art and Design in Farnham, where he studied between 1978 and 1981. Uh, later on, he, he earned a master's degree in photography at the Royal College of Art in, in London, um, studying between 1981 and 1983. After his MA was completed, Gupta returned to Canada for a few months, but he um, applied for a, a permanent residency in the United Kingdom and he obtained it. So he was back in the UK before the end of that year. Um, he was partially drawn to, to England um, because of his professional career, but also because he had fallen in love with, um, with someone who also shaped his, his heart in later years. Um, while a student at the Royal College of Art, he demonstrated as well his commitment to arts activism, and he helped to organize the first Black student group show in 1983. He became part of a closely knit but informal network of artists um, of Asian, African, and African-Caribbean descent. And responding for, uh, to the need for an organization to support photography by individuals from minority communities, he helped to found Autograph, um, the Association of Black Photographers, in 1988. In 1995, he was diagnosed with, uh, with being um, HIV positive, which um, is something that has had an enormous impact um, both on his personal life as well as on his, uh, on his professional career. In 2004, at the opening of a retrospective exhibition of his work, uh, Pictures from Here in, in India, in New Delhi, he, he met a man named Shankar and he fell in love with him and decided to relocate to India. Um, in 2007 in India, um, along with uh, Gaudi Jill, he founded Camera Work Delhi, 
which is a free photographic journal intended to combat the secondary status of photography in the Indian art world and to bridge the gap between older crafts traditions and digital technologies. In 2018, uh, Gupta completed a PhD at the University of Westminster. Um, he, as I was saying, he's based in London um, again now, and uh, his work has been profusely exhibited internationally. He has published several photography books, and he's received numerous grants and awards, including an honorary fellowship of the Royal Photographic Society. He does a lot of teaching as well. And his work can be found in many private and public collections. I've listed a few. So there's the George Eastman Museum in USA, the Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Photography in Japan, the Royal Ontario Museum in, in Toronto in Canada, and Tate in, in London, or MoMA in, in New York. So before we look at the new pre-Raphaelites, I thought I would give you a quick overview of um, some of the precedent series um, that he produced without showing any images, um, just so you get a sense of the, the themes that he's interested in and the kind of work that he's produced throughout his career that actually led to the new pre-Raphaelites. So um, in the 1970s, Christopher Street is this uh, first body of work that I referenced when I spoke of, the, of his time in New York in 1976. So it is a series of photographs of gay men hanging out in the, in the area of Christopher Street um, in, in Greenwich Village. And it basically stemmed from the confident mood of gay culture um, at the moment. And in fact, it was this atmosphere that um, basically empowered Gupta to come out himself and, and um, openly acknowledge his, his sexuality. Um, 10 years on in 1984 is the result of um, his deep distress when his relationship with uh, his then partner ended after a decade. Um, I was also mentioning in his biography that in 1983 he relocated to London partially because of his professional career but also because he had fallen in love. Well the end of this relationship um, eventually um, um, basically crystallized in, in this series. Um, in the hope of discovering the keys to a successful long-term gay relationship, Gupta decided to meet and photograph gay couples who had been together at least for 10 years. And he encountered 35 couples, uh, mostly West London residents that he met through various social contacts. In 1986, he produced Black Experience, um, focusing on British Asian life. Um, he approached the project in different ways, addressing uh, several immigrant issues, such as fear or growing old and family, among others. And that's something that will also resonate in the rest of his career, because him himself, having been an immigrant in Canada, um, made him very aware and sensitive to, to these sorts of emotions, feelings, issues, difficulties. Um, Exiles, 1986, um, um, basically draws on the lives of gay men in New Delhi, his hometown. Um, Gupta was hoping that this project would help combat the invisibility of gay men in his native country and to promote queer cultural activity there, which is something that's um, ongoing. Pretended family relationships, um, again, the theme of family, but in this case, um, Gupta was confronting homophobia in the United Kingdom. Um, it is a multimedia work uh, that combines black, black and white and colored photographs, panels, audio commentary, and basically he was exploring the complexities of gay male and lesbian relationships, um, but also suggesting the necessity of political action, which is another thing that has been constant throughout his career. In this case, it was the passage of Clause 28 by the British Parliament. Um, which restricted positive representations of same-sex relationships, uh, which caused him to emphasize political themes very strongly and more so perhaps than in his um, earlier pieces. Again, this is something that will be uh, that will resonate with the new pro raphaelites as we will see. Um, the next series, uh, Social Security, is related to his family once more and his experience as an immigrant child in a different country. So um, basically blending together um, photos from family albums, recordings of telephone conversations with his mother and other materials, um, he created a mosaic of, uh, of the difficult experiences of, of a family of immigrants in a different country. Um, as I was saying, Gupta's family was um, 
not very in favor of him pursuing a career as a photographer and they never openly acknowledge his um, homosexuality. Um, the Trespass series and From Here to Eternity um, are bodies of work that um, connect in time to his diagnosis as an HIV positive. For the Trespass series, he changed the size of his work and went on to mural size works. Um, for trespasses, he explore the, the concept of trespassing. So what is it you're trespassing? You can transport, uh, transpass personal factors or um, collective history, cultures, economic agendas, political propaganda, race, sexuality, health status, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and these took a few years um, because there were several commissions for the trespass series. Um, From Here to Eternity was the conclusion of the um, kind of the, um, the parenthesis that followed after his diagnosis. He, he fell into um, a sort of creative slump um, once he discovered he was ill. And From Here to Eternity was the conclusion of that, of that period. Again, um, working in mural size diptychs, um, six of them in this case, he portrays his life as an HIV positive gay man in, in South London. Um, following from that, Homelands, again, mural size diptychs, 15 in this case, um, but he's turning his camera to look at other individuals. So um, it's not just, um, it's just himself, but also the intellectual and psychologically complex interpretation of his life as an uh, HIV positive man. Um, 2004, as I said before, um, in Delhi, Mark, his return to India and Tales of the City, um, it's a series that springs out of his um, interest in, in Delhi, um, but in this case in Old Delhi, which is the old part of the city. Um, and it's basically a travelogue of, of uh, his movements through the space, which is something that is reflected in Stockwell, uh, which I will refer to at the end of this um, line of, of various series. Um, Love and Light, 2004 and 2005, um, is the series that he produced um, after falling in love with this man in India. And it's um, a very intimate series uh, in which um, images of um, new figures um, are juxtaposed with strongly color, brightly lit and sharply focused views. Um, a Time to Love and Imagining Childhood Living with um, HIV in New Delhi, 2004 and 2006, are two series that interpret the lives of children residents in the NIC care home in New Delhi for women and children living with um, HIV and AIDS. So again, it's his um, political activism in this case, um, in this case acting out um, in connection to HIV and, and AIDS. Mr. Malhotra's party, uh, which is almost leading up to the new pre-Raphaelites, um, was made to create to celebrate the emerging new queer lifestyle in India. Um, it's composed of 13 large color photographs, and they, it's, the series shows queer individuals in different kinds of public spaces in Delhi, um, including parks and highways and sidewalks, etc. So by depicting these people outside, um, in a way sort of playful, um, Gupta is outing them quite literally. Um, and the name of the series was inspired um, almost as a contradiction by a sign that Gupta saw posted outside a pub in Delhi and where gay nights frequently were advertised as private parties hosted by a specific individual, in this case, Mr. Malhotra. Um, the new pro I will I will discuss in a few minutes. Um, Love Undetectable. It's a collection of, um, it's a bit of, of a puzzling series because um, it's a collection of diverse images, um, including facial portraits and glimpses of body parts of single individuals and couples, uh, nude and clothed, scenes of gay male and lesbian couples in a variety of interiors and exterior settings. So it, it doesn't seem to have as clear a narrative thread as perhaps other series, but it's precisely that um, the point of it, because the ultimate intent of the series is to develop a more profound understanding of love and, and whether that love is or isn't undetectable in these, um, in these scenes. Sun City is a commission by the Centre Pompidou in, in Paris, and it was first shown over there. Um, the project is a fictional narrative uh, loosely based on a 1962 film called La Jetée uh, by Chris Maker. Um, however, the, uh, there was a nuclear apocalypse in the film and Gupta replaced that um, with the Holocaust or with the crisis of HIV AIDS. Um, and he replaced also the romantic interest, heterosexual romantic interest in the film by um, an immigrant homosexual um, person. Uh, Women in Love from 2011 um, 
is a series that again explores the topic of, of love. Um, in this time, in this uh, occasion, looking at the idea of two women in a relationship in, in Delhi um, in a sort of magazine uh, style. And finally, Home, um, Stockwell um, is a project, I'm not sure if it's ongoing actually, it's a project um, of urban landscape, so sort of in the vein of, of Tales of the City um, in Delhi, but in this case in London. And it, he documents the neighborhood of, uh, of Stockwell in South London, um, which has been extensively regenerated and has changed um, a lot in, in recent years. So as you can see, um, in most of these series, um, there are recurrent topics and themes such as love, relationships, um, emotions and how to how to express love how to find love what defines love and what doesn't define love um obviously aids and hiv um, is a recurrent theme as well um diversity um immigration being an advocate an advocate for minorities and invisible groups or invisible people um the joys and and, and glories and lights and shadows of queer life um, et cetera, et cetera. So it is a very consistent body of work and, and he has a number of recurrent themes which we will see in the, the new Raphaelites as well. So the new Raphaelites, um, it's a series that originated in 2008 um, as a commission from Autograph in London, which you will remember that he helped found. Um, both the artist and autograph intended the series to support the legal battle against section 377 of the Indian Penal Code. Um, I will be um, telling you more about it in a few in a few minutes. There was also another sort of event that triggered the series, which was an exhibition of uh, pre-Raphaelite um, paintings at Tate in, in London. So Obviously, the title references the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, um, which was an association of British artists founded in 1848 by William Holden Hunt, Sir John Everett Millet, and Dante Gabriel Rossetti, which is very fitting with uh, Rossetti's portraits, the other exhibition that we will have running alongside um, this exhibition. Um, some members of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood were artistically innovative, but um, in terms of their personal lives and thoughts were slightly socially conservative as well. So that's something that Gupta was aware of and found interesting in terms of, of how radical they were in one facet of their life, but maybe not so much in, in others. Um, however, these artists came to prominence in the UK during the era when Section 377 was instituted in India. So they were being very radical in their, in their practice, but at the same time, something as, um, as serious and as life-changing as Section 377 has been for many people was uh, being instituted in, in India, um, inspired by the, uh, the British Empire. Um, each of the photographs is based on a painting by a member of the Brotherhood or by one of their close followers, um, that we will see that in a, in a minute. Um, Gupta recreates the vibrancy of the colors and the intensity and the mystery of these works. And um, when I spoke to him, he, he said that he was very drawn to the aesthetic and that it was a very important part of the series when he was working on it, that the aesthetic had to be right. Um, in terms of the subjects, he cast friends and associates um, in compositions that incorporate contemporary Indian elements. So he is bringing those paintings up to date and, and you will see many of these elements as we go along. Um, he aims to portray emotionally honest, positive and sensual visions of South Asian gays, lesbians and transgender individuals while subverting racist and homophobic conventions and deconstructed orientalist stereotypes. So this is, could be true of pretty much any of his series, but in this particular aspect, we have the relationship between painting and, and photography and obviously this orientalist um, um, vision of, of the other and the otherness. So without further ado, well, actually, no, hang on. We can talk about section 377 first. Um, so section 377 of the Indian Penal Code um, establishes the following. Whoever voluntarily has carnal intercourse against the order of nature with any man, woman, or animal shall be punished with imprisonment for life or with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 10 years and shall also be liable to fine. Explanation, penetration is sufficient to constitute the carnal intercourse necessary to the offense described in this section. It is a very raw and it's a very um, harsh um, section of the Indian Penal Code. 
And the timeline of, of events is that it was instituted in the 1860s during the British rule, and it criminalized gay sex between consenting um, adults. This was in place for two centuries, well, for a century and a half, uh, basically. And it allowed people to go to jail, to be prosecuted, to be fined, um, to be punished in, in various ways. Um, so after several years of campaigning and opposition, in 2009, the Delhi High Court uh, read down the section to apply only to non-consensual, penile, non-vaginal sex and sexual acts by adults with minors. This judgment was overturned in December 2013 by the Supreme Court of India. It was a bit of a complicated um, story and I encourage you to read more on it if you're interested because it is a fascinating subject, but it's complicated to summarize. Um, in August 2017, a nine judge bench of the Supreme Court of India upheld the right to privacy as a fundamental right intrinsic to life and liberty. And that was one of the first steps towards um, taking down section 377 because it observed that sexual orientation is an essential attribute of privacy. So based on this rule, um, section 377 was anonymously repelled as unconstitutional by the Supreme Court of India on 6 September, 2018. This was a, this was a, a, change, a game changer for, um, for LGBT plus communities in India. However, um, Section 377, or a form of it, remains in the penal codes of Malaysia, Singapore, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, and Jamaica. So what you have to remember is that this section was rebelled in 2018. The new Prorafalites was produced in 2008-2009, so 10 years before any of these events happened. Um, it was, in fact, before even that um, the reading down of the section by Delhi High Court so it was at a moment in which um, living your love and showing your love in public or your sexual orientation could be considered a crime and you could be at risk. So the people in these, in these images um, showed a degree of commitment and, and courage um, by allowing the photographer to show them in these pictures um, that we shouldn't um, overlook. And now indeed, without further ado, let's look at the series in more detail. So all the images that you can currently see on screen are somehow connected to, are belong to the new Pro-Raphaelites. Um, but I need to give you additional context because you will read in the exhibition text that there are only 10, 10 images, which um, is not even the 10 we are showing. So I will explain in a minute. Um, and over here we have 14. So the first commission was indeed of 10 images. Um, however, um, these were produced over one summer, basically, and then they were showed, and then um, Gupta decided to expand the series to include other people and other images. And that's why we have 14 today. There is also um, two more anomalies. Um, one anomaly is that there's uh, an image from the series, from the original one, from the original 10, that cannot be shown anymore. It's this one with the two women and the child because there's been a problem with um, children's rights and the depiction of a, a nude child in the United States. So the whole image has been taken um, out of the series and cannot be shown um, publicly anymore. Um, the other anomaly is this image down here, um, which I will tell you more about in a minute. Um, what I've just done here is um, graying out the four images that will not be on display in the exhibition. So um, the two women, this couple, um, this man who is an academic um, that Sunil Gupta really wanted to have um, represented in the series. So this is one of the later editions and, and these two men um, holding hands. Now I'm going to um, show you all the images um, in the order that you would see them as you walk through the exhibition. Um, which is, has nothing to do with the order of the uh, um, titles or, or the order in which they were taken. So the first image that people will see when they come to the Holborn will actually be waiting for them at the bottom of the staircase. So where Queen Charlotte um, is sitting today, we'll have this masked man. Um, the inspiration for this work is um, on the right, um, this this uh, work by Joanna Boyce Wells, a uh, study of Fanny Eaton from, from the Center for British Art um, at Yale. 
Um, Fanny Eaton was a Jamaican-born model. Uh, she was the daughter of a former slave on a British-owned plantation, and probably she was um, of mixed race. Um, she sat for several of the pre-Raphaelites, and she had quite an interesting life, um, if you would like to read more um, on her. The fact that this man has a mask and is wearing a mask is not connected to the pre-Raphaelites, but it's actually connected to the first Pride March that took place in Delhi in 2009. So for that mask, uh, sorry, for that march, um, participants had to hide their identities and therefore they wore masks. And that's something that Gupta wanted to um, recreate and, and somehow represent in the series. And title number two is the, is the image that will be sitting um, on the landing outside of the Worth. Um, it's inspired by a Rossetti um, work from the National Gallery of Victoria, Melbourne. So it was particularly fitting to have um, that image um, almost facing the, the entrance to the, to the exhibition. And title number 12 is, again, somehow an anomaly, but this is just because the artist couldn't remember what was the painting that he took the inspiration from. So he knows that he took inspiration from a specific painting because he, he told me a couple of times that the hands of the model didn't quite work with, uh, with his original reference, but he's been unable to tell me what it was. So we know there, is, there was a painting at some point. I just can't tell you which one it was. Um, and title 15 is, um, is based on a work by Philip Hermogenes Calderon from Tate, it's called Broken Vows. Um, the title of the painting suggests that the woman has recently discovered that her lover, whose initials are carved in the fence, has been unfaithful. Um, there are other details like a discarded necklace and dying flowers, and they all sort of represent her unhappy um, situation. Um, ironically, for this um, recreation, um, Gupta um, chose his own partner. So I really hope there's no commentary behind that. Um, and title number 13 is again uh, the, the anomaly that I mentioned that I would explain. So um, and at the inception of the new Raphaelites, there was a man in, dressed in a sari in an exhibition opening in Delhi that Gupta saw and decided that he had to photograph. So that was inspired by Olympia um, by Edouard Manet, which is not a pre-Raphaelite painting, but the, it was based on a, on a painterly reference. And it was basically that idea that then developed into the new pre-Raphaelite. So actually it should be untitled number one. It isn't though untitled number one because that first image is not this one. That first image was sold to a private collector and was taken away from the series. It doesn't belong to the new Pre-Raphaelites anymore. So when the new Pre-Raphaelites became the new Pre-Raphaelites and become a series, um, Gupta decided that he had to recreate this original burst of inspiration at that um, opening and he had to find um, or recreate his own previous photograph. So he hired a model. So this person is the only person that was paid for and that was hired effectively to pose for the series, whereas everyone else are people that Gupta knows um, personally or were involved in the fight against Section 377, other activists, or as you saw in, in the previous image, his partner um, or other um, close um, uh, relations. Um, Olympia was not just the only um, source of inspiration for, um, for this one. It was also the source of inspiration for Untitled um, number three. Um, as you probably all know, um, the confrontational gaze of Olympia caused a huge shock and astonishment in Paris when it was first shown at the 1865 um, Paris Salon. Um, and the number of details in the picture identified her as a prostitute. So that um, undertone was again interesting for this, um, for this project. Untitled number seven um, is based on Henry Wallace's Chatterton um, from Tate. 
Um, Chatterton was an, an 18th century poet, uh, a very romantic figure whose melancholy temperament and early suicide captured the imagination of numerous artists and writers. He is known for a collection of poems um, written in the name of uh, Thomas Rowley, who was a 15th century monk, which he copied onto parchment and passed on uh, passed off as a medieval uh, manuscript. He was condemned in his lifetime as a forger by influential figures such as uh, Horace Walpole, for instance, and he was then elevated uh, to the status of a tragic hero um, by the French poet Alfred de Vigny. Um, and title number six um, is based on Miles's Mariana from Tate. So the story of Mariana um, is connected to Shakespeare's Measure for Measure. So she was rejected by her fiance, Angelo, um, because her dowry was lost in a shipwreck. And she lives a very lonely experience in a motor grange. Um, she's still in love with him, with Angelo, um, but, and she longs to be reunited with him. But unfortunately, that is not um, how the story goes for her. As you can see, she's having a break from, from working at the table and embroidery. And her pose is recreated by the, the model on the left, but her attitude is a lot more defiant, a lot more courageous, perhaps, than that of, of Mariana. It could be also a um, subject for discussion about dowries and, and how that is a, a big conversation in India, in fact. And title number four is inspired by um, Miles's The Bridesmaid, um, which is at the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge. And the bridesmaid illustrates uh, one of the many marriage traditions that uh, took place in Victorian times. So it was believed at the time that a bridesmaid would see a vision of her true love if she passed a piece of wedding cake through a ring um, nine times, um, which is what is depicted in this, in this painting. There's an orange blossom on the woman's chest, which represents chastity. Um, and there's also a bit of a hint of fear, perhaps, in her expression, which is nothing like the expression of the model on the left, that she, she looks a lot more peaceful and almost more spiritual than the bridesmaid um, herself. Um, and title number 10, it's based on Woman's Mission Companion of Manhood from um, George Elgar by George Elgar Hicks, which is an update again. And this is in fact a triptych. So this is this would be the middle um, painting of the triptych. Um, the entire triptych would depict um, woman's mission as guide of childhood, company of manhood, and comfort of old age. So in the first one, she would be um, clearing a child's path of brambles and guiding his steps. On the second one, as you can see, she is supporting her husband in a moment of grief, probably caused by the letter that he's holding on, on his left hand. And the third one, she is looking after her aging father in his final years. So she's been she's been shown as a mother, a wife, and a daughter in in those three um, um, aspects of her life that were seen as um, the basis of of what being a woman was in the nineteenth century. Um, for his photograph, Gupta has reversed. Um, well, reverse has complemented, I guess, the, the role. So it's two women um, and, and one of them is supporting the, the other. And in fact, if I remember correctly, I think there might have been a couple, but I am not completely sure. So in terms of the exhibition layouts, um, as I was saying, down at the bottom of the staircase, we will have the man with the, with a the mask. And then as you reach the, the landing on the wharf, you will find the exhibition text and, and the image of the two men kissing. And then as you go into the space, you will have two images per wall. There might be some slight variations um, on the day, depending on, on whether we want to readjust sizes. But basically, this is, um, this is what the exhibition is going to look like. Um, the wall color is blue, that's why this light has changed um, background color. All the works are glazed, there will be no barriers whatsoever. And in fact, one thing that you may notice in the, um, in the um, captions that may surprise you, so I might as well warn you, is that some of the photographs will be dated um, 2009, 2008, 2010, and some others will be dated 2021. That means that we have a few images in the show, five in fact, 
which are exhibition copies that existed already. And we have five which were produced um, specifically for the show. So that's why they say 2021, because they will be, they have been produced um, a few weeks ago. Um, the other thing that I would like to highlight is that um, all these images that I've shown you in the presentation will be accessible because all the captions will have a QR code. So the labels on the wall um, will allow people to scan a QR code on their phones and those QR codes will take them to the websites that um, hold those paintings in their collections so they can read more information, they can see the images that these photographs were based on. So. Um, hopefully, you know, people will be um, interested enough to, to scan the codes and, and find out more for themselves. But if you can encourage them to do that, that would be um, fantastic. Um, and lastly, um, there is a public program for this exhibition, but there's only one um, event planned for it. So on Thursday, 11 November from um, 7 to 8 on Zoom, Sunil will be talking about art, activism and queering India. Um, so you're very welcome to join um, the conversation and ask him as many questions as you wish. He's um, incredibly nice and helpful and willing to, to share and super didactic. So it's a pleasure to, to discuss things with, with him. And I am sure that his, um, his uh, presentation will be incredibly interesting. So just to finish, in fact, I would like to um, complete this presentation with a few words by him, in fact, that talk about the series and, and I think are a perfect summary of the things that we have discussed um, tonight. So Sunil Gupta describes the new Raphaelites um, as thus. In this series of pictures, I wanted to address the problem of the lack of an easily accessible iconography of same-sex desire involving women and men in India. Indian history has only just begun to recognize the contributions of same-sex desire in literature, but not in our history. In making this body of work in Delhi, I use well-known references to Western, in inverted commas, art history, since it has gained a certain international recognition. The pre-Raphaelite group of painters in England were formed to contest the stifling norms of their world and to express a new moral seriousness and sincerity in their works, especially fluidity around sexuality and gender. I've chosen to adapt their focus on camp and sensuality and the arrangement of the body and update it all to visualize a modern India queer identity. So I really look forward to sharing this exhibition with you very soon. Um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Danyavat. And I know I still haven't met many of you um, in the galleries yet. So uh, please, if you see me around, stop me, say hi. I will always be delighted to talk. So I hope you enjoy the talk and I hope to see you at the Holborn soon.